Why, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock and I'm going to be working on airplanes today. And I'm going to talk about the differences between when you use lines in your artwork or don't use lines in your artwork. And these are stamps, which of course come with lines. So I'm going to be stamping them in two different types of ink. The stamps are new from Colorado Craft Company and they have airplanes with little figures you can stamp into them etc. I'm going to just be doing the planes themselves and I'm going to be using my Olo markers which are still in a Schwarzkopf box. I just put stickers on it. This is not official storage. They are working on something for those of us who use two ends of the marker in different colors. So I can't put them in like cups or bags because then I can't see both sides. So I keep them in a box. I am going to be picking out some colors from my hex chart which will be updated when they come out with their new colors later this spring. And I'm going to just choose my colors from it. There are a couple of different hex charts on my website. I will link you to that page in case you need one. I will be using a white gel pen and a Graphwood 9B pencil. Any kind of pencil will do for the kind of details that I will be adding. And then I'm going to use two different inks. As I said, one is Memento Black. The other is Ink on 3. They call it No Line. I'm calling it Implied Line. First, I want to say thank you to the Googles because I had a massive technical glitch going on here while I was trying to record this video. I had suddenly, I don't know why, just suddenly lost access to my voiceover equipment. Like nothing was talking to each other, the microphone and everything. And I plugged it in and unplugged it and plugged it in and unplugged it repeatedly. Nothing happened. I went to Google. They gave me all these instructions to change all these buttons, which I discovered had already been changed. They were things in my computer that were fine. And then I went and un unplugged everything and plugged it all back in and then it started working. So it might just be good karma, but thank you to the Googles and whatever it was that made everything work because it's very frustrating when technology does not work. Anyway, I am going to be working in these Olo markers. They're alcohol markers, if you are probably familiar with them, if you're watching this. And I am going to be creating some bounce light on this airplane. Bounce light is where the light actually hits, say, the ground or the wall or another object around what you're drawing and casts light back on it on the shadow side. So the main shadow on this, the darkest part of the shadow, is actually going to be the center two-thirds of the plane. Because there's going to be a lighter highlight on the top side and a not as light highlight on the bottom side and then all that dark in the middle. When you're working on an object like this that just has, you know, like it's like a long cylinder type of thing, the shadows for each of the parts in between are also going to be the same. We'll see a little bit more of that and talk about it in the other one because it became more of an issue there. But if the shadow is, you know, at a certain level in the blue areas, then your shadow will be the same in the other areas that are along that same plane because the shadows will travel together. So I'm putting my long, you know, just down the whole long side of the plane, putting my shadow in, leaving a little bit of room for that lighter color at the bottom. I am using three different blues for this, and I'm going to li just list all the colors over on my blog if you want those color numbers. Um, so that will be there. I was going to put them on the screen, but after all these technical difficulties, I just wanted it done. So there you go. The a uh, little fin on the back side there. I had to start off with dark at the bottom because there is light at the top of the plane and I wanted those two to separate from each other. So even if an object or a part of an object is not necessarily going to be in shadow because this is just a vertical plane up in the, you know, pointing toward the sky, if you make it a little bit darker, that's where your artistic license comes in when you want to separate one section from another, you can add a little extra shadow, even if it technically, I'm using my little bunny ears that you can't see, you can technically make up a new shadow if you need to, to separate two sections from each other. And that is perfectly legal to do. 
It's something I do all the time. Just kind of going in and putting another layer of the dark blue and tidying up some sections around the yellow now that I got them in there. I should have done my yellow first because the yellow can sometimes pick up darker colors around it. But I'm just going to reaffirm my shadows in here. Put a darker shadow right underneath the wing because the wing casts a shadow onto the plane and I did that in grays. And uh, then just going to start putting in yellows into more areas of the plane. I decided I wasn't going to make it, I was going to make like, you know, metal strips around the plane. And I thought, you know, let me just do it in blue and yellow because it'll be much more fun to have the plane, all of its little fancy parts having been painted yellow instead of being metallic. But they're still going to have the same shine, the same highlight areas, except on a yellow, it's difficult to get the highlights really necessarily because you're not going to be able to see them on a very pale yellow. But I will add some more color into the yellow shortly because I was noticing I wasn't getting much dimension. The only place I could see much of any of it in the yellow was in the nose of the airplane. So you'll see how that will develop. I also discovered I was looking at reference photos of little airplanes and realized that a lot of them have a color on the inside of the wheel. I always just made them, you know, black with either white or gray in the middle, but a lot of them have a coordinating color to the airplane. So I decided to make mine uh, blue on the inside. The shadow for this is going to be like long and thin for the most part, because you're looking at the plane from the side and then the two wings are going to stick out. And then the two little mini wings in the back, I don't know if they're called mini wings, probably could have looked that up. Uh, but here I'm adding my darker color. This is more of a brown color that I'm going to put into the yellow. So it'll still feel yellow, but I get some nice difference in the value. And that made a, a big difference, I think, in the artwork itself. And then I'm going to pop in here with some darker shadow. When you're talking about any shadow that's touching the ground, the shadows closest to those objects are going to be darkest and the center of the plane is going to cast the darkest shadow, but then it's going to fade out as it gets out to the outer edges because the sun is just kind of curling around the object. Now, before I get to the yellow plane with the implied lines, let me do a disco ball lights ad. I have been told by my students that I am not good at getting the news out to people that there's a class. There's a new class, Brushstroke Flowers. And since this is a card making video, some of you might be interested in making some beautiful Brushstroke Flowers cards. We're going to do a couple different exercises for each of the five flowers. One is going to be working with a Buddha board where you can paint with water and just keep practicing and get your brush strokes down and it just evaporates and you don't have to use up paper. Secondly, we're going to be painting in ink. So we're going to do black and white, working with the values, because this whole thing is Asian inspired. And you might know that Sumi art is a beautiful thing. This is not Sumi because I'm Sumi dumb. But then we're going to move into changing those into color. And you can use the black and white and the color for cards because they're both gorgeous. And there's a whole bunch of different techniques that I will be sharing with the class for card making a lot of different ribbon techniques because I used to be a ribbonista back in the day. Beautiful cards, simple ones, simple ways to embellish, to dress them up just a little bit. But there are 20 different cards that I made during the process of the class because I painted each flower four times and there's five of them. If you're interested, links in the doobly doo. Let's turn off the disco ball lights and get back to the airplanes. Sorry about that. I, I really stink at marketing, but I also need to market. That's kind of like what keeps me alive. All right. So when you're talking about implied lines, in this particular case, it's a stamp. So the stamp is stamped in a light ink. You don't have to use the no line ink. You can just use any light ink to do that with. But the the very light lines get covered and and kind of, I guess, distracted from even if you leave some of them by the the color around them. So even when you've got a yellow plane, the yellow plane is not bothered by having a bunch of big black lines. If you look at a yellow plane on a tarmac, you're not going to see it outlined with black lines. 
And in this particular case, I wanted to start building up the values. Well, I'm not going to build up all of the yellow values until I have some of the darker blue values in there because the bottom half of the plane is going to be blue. Since this is all about Ukraine, I'm very excited. We've got aid going to the Ukrainians and my friend there is going to be very happy that they are going to have something to fight with now. But anyway, I needed to get the blue values in there so that the yellow has something to balance off against. I'll know how dark the yellow needs to get. Because when you're just working with the light colors in whatever art you're doing, then it's really easy to kind of really fuss over that, try to get it perfect. And then you put some dark values into the drawing and all of a sudden everything looks washed out. So I try to, you know, start with whatever it is that I want to begin with and then slowly add in some of the darker values so that I can, I can just start to compare them to what the darks are because the yellow half of the plane just started looking weaker and weaker the more of the blue that I got in there. So I started putting in some of the blue details even because I wasn't sure which of those stripes that I was going to put on the, the wings, how that was going to work out and how much would it separate the wings from the plane and do they even look like wings and they didn't really. So I needed to start thinking through some other things like all of the trim couldn't be white and I didn't want it to be dark blue. So I made it a light blue, a light version of the blue at the bottom and started just kind of bringing that color around a few places on the plane. And it still wasn't quite feeling like I was getting enough separation between all the shapes. So I went in with a brown and sometimes I'll use a purple, but in this particular case, I didn't want it to go gray because mixing purple with a yellow will often go more toward a, a gray color. And so I started using this really light brown color. Didn't know if I needed to go darker with it, but if I went darker, I didn't want the plane to feel like it was a brown plane. I wanted it to feel still yellow. And I could even go over this with like a golden orangey yellow if I need to, to try to brighten it up. But you can see that the tail section is starting to separate from the body of the plane. Those kind of things are what I'm looking for, the different shapes, um, the different planes of the plane to start moving apart from each other by the fact that one has a dark value next to a light value. So I'm doing the same thing with the shadow here as I did on the other plane, just putting that, that kind of long horizontal in there as you, know, you kind of look sideways at a plane or any kind of, you know, long object like that. It'll look almost like a line with just a little bit of shadow coming out for each of the wings and then darker right underneath where the, the wheels are touching the tarmac. And uh, blend that out a little bit with the lighter color. Again, all these colors will be listed over on the blog. I put a shadow with a dark gray underneath of the wing, but then I wanted to start Kind of finessing some final details. I put some blue in the windshield and mushed it out a bit with some colorless blender and then started in with a pencil. Yes, a regular old pencil. Well, not a regular old pencil. This is my 9B, so it is a little stronger, a little darker. And I'm going to put some shadows around each side of the, the little metal pieces that are holding the plane together, those metal bands. And then beside them, I can start putting in all of the little bolts and things that hold the plane together. When you're drawing something on top of a light color like this, then the bolts will be darker than the light color in general. And then when you start moving into the darker areas, the same bolts, they might be the same color, but the same bolts on top of blue are going to perhaps reflect some light onto them. We'll catch some light. So then those might be white. Just give a little bit more contrast in there, add a little bit of detail in a couple different places as you wish. And there are our two planes for comparison. They kind of look like they're flying when I'm zooming over it with my phone like this. I hope that these two side-by-side -side examples show you the differences between a black line look or an implied line look and which one you prefer because both are perfectly fine. It's all personal preference. My cards are really simple. They're over on the blog and of course on the blog since it's Colorado Craft 
and a new release it's going to be blog hop lots of prizes and stuff so go over there check everything out and links are in the doobly do to all of it and that's about it for me i will see you again next week subscribe if you haven't because there is more fun coming maybe i'll draw a disco ball does anybody want to see me draw a disco ball because i think i should all right talk to you later bye bye <laughs>